Today, we are putting together our ATI Super Damper for Project Super Auto 2.0. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the pigsty garage. Wait a second. Pigsty. Oh, my garage is just a pigsty. We're actually in the goat rope garage, and today we are doing our ATI Super Damper for Project Super Auto so we can run our eight rib setup. This thing kind of spiraled out of control. Originally, I thought I had ordered the eight rib pulley that goes on the factory one, uh, but I'll be honest with you, that one uses cam bolts to align the pulley. This is a much better option, just a lot more expensive, unfortunately. It's been like pulling teeth to get all the correct parts. We're gonna to touch on all of that as we go through the assembly of our damper. Uh, so make sure and stick around. You might learn something that'll help you out uh, as far as getting all of this crap done. Uh, but let's also go ahead and say, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Click the icon, ring the bell. You don't wanna miss out. We did two live shows this weekend. Uh, I don't know when they're gonna be. I just pop up in the garage live sometimes. We answer questions. So if you have that notification on, you don't miss, on, uh, miss out on it. And if you haven't already, like the videos. That helps me out immensely. I appreciate everybody that does take the time, that finds this information helpful. Uh, thank you for liking the videos. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for participating, showing up to the live show Thursday night, eight Eastern. Also check out the websites. Tuning101.com will take you to our YouTube homepage where you can find all of the playlists. There's over 200 videos on there. Videos, the playlists are broken down on generations, tuning tips, basic tuning guides. There's so much tuning information out there already. I suggest check out the quick tuning tips. There's some really cool videos in there on different subjects that I just kind of throw together as I'm stumbling across different things. Also go to GoatRopeGarage.com. That's our main website where you can buy merch. Check out our Patreon if you need tuning assistance. That's the way to do it. 15 bucks a month gets you email tune assistance. And you can also check out our custom tune options if you're one of the people who are just looking to get their vehicle tuned by somebody. So that all out of the way, let's dive into this. We're going to just take a look at everything I've got laid out on the table here. We're going to touch on a couple things as we assemble and we'll go from there. Okay, we got everything laid out here, including the factory balancer. This thing was a beast to get off. The bolt, listen, uh, it's like a 15 16 The ATI kit comes with a new one. Make sure you have a six point. Don't put a 12 point on these things. They will round off super easy. They're on around 250 to 300 foot pounds of torque. It took me a uh, 24 inch breaker bar with a 24 inch cheater pipe to get this one off. Not this one, this is the new one, but to get it off. And then you're gonna need a uh, pulley. The Chrysler GM pulley works really well for these. I've got the blue point one. Uh, I'll try and find a part number to link it down in the description below, but it works very well. And if you don't have the pins that goes into the crank, uh, what you can do is take your one that you removed and cut this off here around there where it's just the bolt head, the pulley will pull through it and it gives you something to butt up against. So this piece of junk out of the way. Oh, before I do, the other setup uh, where it mounted on the front of this one, this one of course does not fit, sits back in there, seats down, and then it has uh, six cam bolts that go around the outside where you basically twist them all down and it centers your uh, eight rib supercharger pulley to the front of this one. Uh, so, I mean, that's what comes with the stage two kit. If you get the stage two kit, uh, probably would be fine. But honestly, if you're gonna be running something like an F1A or even a D1SC, where you're worried about having belt issues, let's go this route. So, what do you get? Well, that's confusing. If you've been to ATI's website, it's not very helpful. Their catalog is better. Their catalog actually has some notes on there. We're looking at the L86 truck unit, and it says in particular that this unit, the front drive, the accessory drive, this is for your alternator and water pump, is sold separately. If it said that on the website, I missed it. I looked at it a thousand times. This comes in OEM, which is this size, a 10 underdrive, and you can also do a 10 overdrive. And they can also do custom setups for this. So if you are converting, uh, say, your stage one kit over to an eight rib, you can get an eight rib 
uh, for your front drive, you'll have to get all the other pulleys and stuff, which gets prohibitively expensive. It's just easier to keep this as a six drive. So this is one part that you have to buy. The second one comes with the damper and the hub. Once again, not very clear on the website, in the magazine or the catalog, it's super clear. There's a part number that comes with the damper and the hub. Then there's a part number for the damper only, and then there's a part number for the hub only. So I've got an extra hub here that I've got to send back. Uh, so do your uh, due diligence on that. Make sure that you're getting the one that has the hub and the damper. Uh, if you have any questions, just call them up, 877-298-5040 because it's their website sucks i'll just say it their website sucks along with that this kit you get the crank bolt and of course the allen heads that recess back into the damper to mount the hub and then you get the cap bolts where's my other one the arp cap bolts that mount our front drive and our supercharger pulley this is by the other ATI Pro Charger, and it is DC034A-022. This is the eight rib setup specifically, and it nestles nice and neat down inside of our accessory drive. Nice tight compression fit. Now, I have heard some reports that these hubs do not like to go on. Some of them have to be honed out. Fingers crossed we don't have to do that on this setup, but if we do, I guess we can. So I'm gonna bring the camera down here so you can see a little bit closer what we're doing. The Torx bolts already have blue Loctite on them. They're a T40. Uh, I've got my uh, torculator over here. Uh, and the nice thing about it is, is the directions are right on the front for installation. Torque T40 to 16 foot pounds and then the cap bolts are going to 28. So uh, whenever you're using a torque wrench, make sure that you on the lowest setting, it's always stored on the lowest setting. Don't store this thing at a higher setting, it will ruin it. Then on top of it, on the lowest setting, put this thing in a vise or something and break it a couple times. Hear the torque click over, just to make sure everything's moving nice and freely before you set it. Then we're gonna go ahead and set out to 16 to start. Doop, doop. May have overshot it right off the bat. Okay, there's 10, 16. Tighten down our knob, and we're good to go. So whenever you go to align the hub to the damper, there's something that we're looking for. There is a dot. You probably can't really see it here. Uh, the arrow here saying offset hole is pointed to it, but there is a dot by this hole. There will be a dot on your hub also to show you which hole to line that up with. So pretty straightforward. Make sure that that dotted hole is lined up with that one and it should just nice and smoothly fit down on there. It's gonna be a tight fit. And we might have to pull this up. Let's see if we can get some thread started. Yep, okay. So, we're gonna go through, tighten these things down, and then we'll torque them in a star pattern. In fact, let's just speed this up. Even whenever you're tightening these things down, make sure you're kind of doing it in a star pattern so it's pulling the hub up uh, once you start getting tension evenly. There we go, and it just slipped down, perfect. So now we can run them all down without torquing. Okay, throw it on our torque wrench here. Hopefully I can hold this thing and get the torque values that we're looking for. Oh, stay in there. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna run this thing over, set it gently in the vise, torque these down to 16 foot pounds. I'll be right back. Okay, now that we've got that torque down to 16 foot-pounds, we're going to go ahead and set up our torque wrench to 28 for the ferry cap bolts. And there's 28. So, 
no alignment marks on this stuff. Just align it up with the holes that we're shooting for. This thing sits nice and, and snug down on there to make it kind of a single piece. And then the same ordeal with this. Everything's really machined well to make everything fit in well. Fairy cab bolts have uh, washers that go on them. They don't come with Loctite, so I've got my blue Loctite out here. We're gonna throw some on. And I'm gonna need a uh, ratchet extension. See if I can do this without getting Loctite everywhere. It's always my problem. Okay, we've got our finished assembly all together. It's a good looking piece, I'm not gonna lie. A lot better looking than the factory one. Uh, all we've got to do now is install this thing which means I've got to dig around and find my trusty old Haynes manual or Google what our crank bolt torque needs to be. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the old torqueulator here is not going to be able to go high enough for this thing. What do we go up to? 150. Yeah, yeah. We're going to need more than 150, but at least we'll verify 150 using this thing. So, uh, that's pretty much it, straightforward, super easy to assemble this stuff. As I said, the, the money information is what's on the website. It's not entirely clear what we're looking for, what we're looking at. So either call them, get one of the catalogs, you know, don't do like I did and just blindly order stuff off the internet hoping you get the right parts because uh, I should have had this done about two weeks ago to be honest with you. But it is what it is, still waiting on all kinds of other parts for uh, the fuel rail adapters and things like that. So we're not in a huge hurry, but this is the first step of getting the stage two bracket installed. And I'm gonna be doing a review on it here soon, comparing the stage two bracket versus the stage one that we were running and whether or not it's worth upgrading. So if you have any questions, comments, make sure and hit them up down below. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have any tips or tricks on how you get your crank bolts out, me, I just take a breaker bar, wedge it in the flywheel and just go to town. But there's a lot of different ways that people like to do it. If you have any tips or tricks, uh, let me know. If you've had to, if you've installed one of these and had to hone the hub, let me know. I'd be interested to know how many people actually had to hub the hone, hone the hub, <laughs> hub the hone, hone the hub. How many had to hone the hub? I'm hoping I don't have to. Hopefully just line up the keyway, kind of get it started and then pull it down with the old uh, crank bolt. But as always, thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember ABT, always be tuning.